Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. Um, I'm, I'm Megan, Megan Galane, and then I have Diana Hoff here with me. We are going to be talking about individual K plans, or some people call it solo K. There's like 20 different names for them, but what they are are 401ks for the sole proprietor business owner. And Diana's going to take it away and talk more about it, but just some housekeeping. The comments, they come directly to us. I will be in the comments section answering any questions or asking Diana any questions. So if you want to add your comments, please just add them in the comment section and those will go um, directly to us no matter what platform or channel you're, you're listening on as long as there's live stream, we'll get the comments. And then also just keep in mind, we are heading up to, heading towards the end of the year and there are some deadlines. So the individual K plan is part of it, but um, give us a call at 866-377-3311 if you have an IRA and are wondering what deadlines there are. There are some deadlines for the end of the year. Um, so just make sure to connect with us beforehand, ask your questions on the live. Again, just write them in the comments. I'll be in the comments as Diana's talking and um, let's get started. So Diana, give a little introduction about yourself. Absolutely. Hi, I am Diana Hoff. I do a lot of the, um, the networking and the meetings and uh, training and education for Mountain West IRA. I am the business and marketing coordinator and um, I just absolutely love to share information, ask anybody, I talk way too much. But let's go ahead and get into this because IKs are amazing. Um, so we like to joke that individual K plans are the superheroes of self-direction because you can do so many things with your self-directed retirement accounts, no matter what type you have, but when you have an individual K plan, you can do even more. We're gonna go over all the ins and outs of a self-directed individual K, but first let's do a little bit of the housekeeping. So this is part of our continuing free education. And I just want to remind you that Mountain West IRA does not offer investment, tax, financial or legal advice to clients. We do not promote, endorse, or offer any investments, but individuals who believe they need that kind of advice should consult with the appropriate professional that is licensed in that area. So we, we love to do this and uh, we can help you with what you wanna do, but we're not gonna tell you what to do. You have the ability to invest in what you know. So I'm going to hit on this really quick because this is a super important deadline. If you want to make a contribution for this year, you must have your plan established by December 31st and you must make your employee contribution by the end of the calendar year. Um, you can typically make employer profit sharing contributions until your tax filing deadline for the tax year. But the year that you open a new individual K, you must get that in by December 31st um, to get your employee contribution in and your IK set up. So let's talk about individual Ks. What is an IK account? Unlike employer-sponsored 401k plans, most people have never really heard of an individual K plan. Um, they're called individual K, solo K, things like that. So an individual or solo 401k works much the same as traditional 401k plans offered by large companies. And they kind of resemble the SEP IRA, which is also designed for um, self-employed and small business. However, an IK is designed strictly for sole proprietor business owners with no employees. The IK can be either a traditional, and you can also have a Roth version for your employee portion, giving you the freedom to choose to either save money on a pre-tax basis where it can grow tax deferred, or if you opt for the Roth version, um, you can save money post-tax. In other words, you pay the taxes first and have it grow potentially tax-free. 
And of course, we all love things that are tax free. So as I said before, a solo 401k is an individual 401k designed for a business owner with no employees. In fact, IRS rules say you cannot contribute to a solo 401k if you have any common law employees. Although you can use the plan to cover both you and your spouse. So there is that. Diana, can you explain what a common law employee Absolutely. is? Absolutely. A common law employee is someone who gets um, paid by you. You control their work. Um, they might be getting W-2. You are paying their um, uh, their income, their uh, employee tax. I just forgot the name of that. Um, you're paying taxes on them. You control their work and they are working for you. So if you're paying anyone to work for you, you have a common law employee. Now, sometimes you might have someone who works for you very, very seldom, maybe a virtual assistant or someone that you hire just to do piecework. If you have someone like that, check with your CPA. They do have tests that they can compare to your employee to decide if that is a common law employee. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at what the contribution limits look like in 2020. So there are two different parts to an IK um, contribution. There is the employee portion that you pay out of your um, paycheck. There's also uh, the employer portion, which is kind of like profit sharing, and that can be up to 25% of your compensation. So in 2020, if you are under 50, you can contribute up to $19,500. Now, if you make $19,500, you can contribute all of that. If you make $18,000, you cannot contribute more than what you make, but you can contribute 100% of your income up to that 19.5. Uh, now, for those of us who are lucky enough to be over 50, we also have a catch-up contribution that we can do, which makes it an extra $6,500. Um, like I said before, the contributions from the employer portion can be up to 25% of your compensation, up to a maximum of $37,500. So what this means is if you are under 50, you can contribute up to $57,000 because remember you're wearing both hats here. If you have an individual K, you are the employer and the employee. And if you are over 50, you can do 63,500. So you can really protect quite a bit of your income and lower taxes both for yourself and for your business. So let's take a look in something a little more real world to give you an idea of what this would look like. So let's assume you are a person over 50 and you make $50,000 in wages. This is a pretty basic example. So your employee portion, your deferral can be up to $26,000. The employer contribution is only going to be 25% of your total wages and that gives you a total of 12,500, which means you can contribute 38,500. So you can actually put away quite a bit, even if you're not making all that much. So let's take a look at what you can do if you can contribute the maximum. Again, we're gonna go over 50 and we're gonna base it on a salary of $150,000. So the employee deferral, which can be either traditional or Roth, can be up to $26,000. The employer contribution is 25% of salary, which is going to be 37.5. So that gives you the ability to put away $63,500. So as you can see, this is a good way to protect a lot of money and the ability to do it as a Roth doesn't give you a tax write-off now, but it gives you the ability for that to grow potentially tax-free. 
Okay, so. Hold on, one minute, I, okay. I just thought about, about this. We get this question all the time about it being tax-free. Does it mean tax-free forever? Like, what does tax-free mean? Okay, that's a really good question. So a Roth is tax-free if it is qualified. So to be qualified, you have to have had it open for five years um, and you have to be over 59 and a half or have a qualifying life event um, like death, which always seems weird that that's a life event, but I guess it is a life event or a disability or first time home purchase. Now, having said that, that means after five years and 59 and a half, you can withdraw funds, earnings, contributions, all of it tax-free forever. Now, there's something not a lot of people realize. Your contributions can always be taken out tax and penalty-free at any time. So if you have put in um, $6,000 in a year and you suddenly need to take some funds out, if that was a contribution, you have the ability to take that out at any time. But that's only for your contributions. There are different rules for conversions. And uh, of course, it must be qualified if we're talking about earnings. But if you want to know how that works for your particular situation, you can always give us a call. So what plan is right for you? What about other employer plans for the self-employed? Let's take a look at three different possibilities. And we're going to use Larry. Larry's a realtor. Uh, realtors love individual case because it gives them the ability to put away a lot. But let's talk about Larry. Larry is a realtor who has no employees and has an annual net business income of $80,000. He is eligible for all three of these types of plans. However, if Larry's goal is to contribute as much as possible, then the individual K plan would actually be his best option. And let's take a look at why. So we've already shown you how this works once. He gets to put in $26,000 as an employee. He gets to put in 25% of his compensation or $20,000 for the employer portion, which gives him $46,000. Now, SEP works a little differently. It still has a 25, up to a 25% employer contribution, but there is no employee portion. This is only like a profit sharing plan. This only comes from the employer side. Now, this person would also have the ability to open a traditional or a Roth IRA, but again, those contributions, if they're under 50, is $6,000 per year or 7,000 if you're over 50. So if Larry had an IRA and a SEP, he would only be able to put in 27,000. So he would still be quite a ways ahead with the individual K. Now a simple, um, I always laugh because a simple actually isn't one of the most simple plans out there, but it's a little bit easier than an individual K. That one only has an employer match of 3%. So the maximum for the employee is 16.5 and 2,400, which is quite a bit different from the employer portion, which only gets you to 18,400. So in this case, the individual K plan would definitely be Larry's best option. And something that we see with the individual K plans or why somebody's opening up an individual K plan, um, if they normally are making quite a bit of money, um, we'll see like, uh, like spouses who are in like MLMs or have like a little side business or just something going on on the side and they don't, it's not their main income and they end up putting everything away possible into an individual K plan so that they can have a great retirement account and, and grow that tax free um, with the individual K plan. So we see that a lot that, um, that, spouses who or somebody who does not need the income immediately will put as much away as possible. And um, I just, so I wanted to touch on that because I think that there are um, a ton of people that have side businesses or just something going on on the side. And this is an option for you to, to actually use that money to invest in your retirement and grow it with real estate, promissory notes and all the things which Diana will go over next. 
Absolutely. You know, I had that exact question today. Um, one of our clients called and he wanted to know he was already participating in a 401k plan at his work, but obviously it wasn't maxed out. Now, he was also a realtor and had his own uh, business, and he wanted to know if he was able to open a solo K as well as participate in his 401k at work. The good news is, yes, you can absolutely do that. The only caveat is you are restricted to the limits. So if you aren't maxing out your 401k at your uh, current employer, then you do have the ability to also open a 401k as long as they are not the same business. That's very important. And you cannot go over the contribution limits. Um, you can also, if you participate in an individual K at work, you do also have the ability to open a SEP plan with your business or your side gig. Side gigs are very popular. I just want to, I just want to clarify that the 401k at work and then that you can have a SEP or a simple, you said individual K. So I wanted to make sure we knew that. It's yeah, you can actually have an individual K and a 401k at work. The difference is they must be separate businesses and the individual K must follow all the rules and requirements to be able to open an individual K. You must be a sole proprietor business owner. So pretty cool. Okay. Now that you have an individual K plan, you have many different investment options. A self-directed retirement account gives you the freedom to invest in much more than stocks, bonds, or mutual funds. Under your direction, you can buy everything from real estate um, to deeds of trust and mortgages. Your IRA can do secured or unsecured notes, partnerships, joint ventures, even private stock. You can invest in many other types of assets as well. Now, while all this is true about any self-directed IRA, uh, traditional, Roth, SEP, simple, all of those, the individual K gives you additional tools and protections that are not found in the other self-directed IRA options. You can do so many things with your self-directed retirements, no matter what type you have, but when you have that individual K plan, you can do even more. So let's talk about some of those things that you can do um, that you may not be able to do in any of the others. Now, spousal IRAs have always been a thing, but you can also do it inside of an individual K. You can cover your spouse. The IRA allows one exception to the no employees rule on the solo 401k. Your spouse, if he or she earns income from your business, could effectively double the amount you can contribute as a family, depending on your income. Your spouse would make elective deferrals as your employee up to 19,500, um, basically up to that contribution limit. And of course, if they're over 50, they can do that catch up provision. Um, and as the employer, you can then make the plans profit sharing contribution for your spouse of up to 25% of their compensation. So that is a way to really seriously put quite a bit away if you and your spouse are working together um, in your business. A question we get quite a bit is can your kids as well have an account? Actually, um, kids can be covered in special circumstances. So you really have to be careful they have to be earning an income. You have to be reporting it. But yes, your family can be covered. So there's that as well. Now, with an individual K plan, and a lot of people like this, you can borrow up to $50,000 or 50% of your account value, whichever is less, for any purpose, including paying personal expenses such as credit card bills, mortgage payments, personal or business investments, um, even buying a car or taking a vacation or anything. The loan has to be paid back over a five-year period at least quarterly 
and at a minimum prime interest rate, although you do have the option of selecting a higher interest rate, because remember, you're paying yourself back. So in essence, if you're paying yourself back, it doesn't hurt to maybe make that interest rate a little bit higher because you are paying yourself. So I want to give a just like a quick overview of like an example of what I've seen done. So a client had a credit card that was getting charged at 18 percent and he decided to take a um, get a, a balance on that credit card, but it was at 18 percent. So he decided to take a loan from his individual K plan and take that loan. Then he paid off the credit card. So then that 18% is gone. Then instead of paying 18% to the credit card company, he was already used to making the payment. So he did 18% back into his individual K plan. So we see everything from, I think the lowest I've ever seen is like 2%. And then the highest, like I said, is like 18 to, to 20 something percent. And if you need a credit card, go look at a if you want to know the interest rates, look at like a credit card company and see what they're charging. That's the most like you can't go ahead. Like you can't go and put 100 <laughs> percent in your, your individual K plan. It has to be like Diana said, it has to be within the range. But um, instead of paying the credit card company that 18 percent, he decided to use his individual K plan. And now he's getting extra income into that individual K plan that does not count as a contribution. That is an actual payment from the loan. So it's not, not contribution. It is basically in the IRS's eyes, it's like a dividend of an investment that you made. So opening the individual K plan, if you have debt, getting it paid off and using the, the loan to do, or using the loan from the individual K plan may be a better option than just paying it off in the long run. So keep that in mind. We see that quite a bit where business owners will utilize these loans and make sure to pay themselves first. So um, like credit cards, uh, we have a client who uses it for um, business um, he took he takes a loan every once in a while for business expenses or investing in himself with education, whatever that looks like for him. And he just pays himself the interest. He acts as his own bank with the individual K plans, which sets this apart from an IRA, because an IRA, you cannot personally take a loan. Um, so it, it pays off for those that that utilize it in, in ways that could benefit them um, in long term. That's an incredible strategy because I would much rather pay myself 18% than give it to a credit card company. <laughs> okay, checkbook control. You can have checkbook control with your IK account without the requirement of first setting up an LLC. So if you wanna do it in, if you wanna have checkbook control inside of an IRA, you must set up an LLC and invest in that with your IRA and then you have checkbook control through that LLC. Um, checkbook control does give you easy access to your funds so you can react quickly in a volatile market and easily take advantage of time sensitive investments. Many investment transactions will be much quicker and can be as simple and expedient as writing a check. Checkbook control can also help you avoid the transaction fees and check writing fees normally associated with any self-directed IRA. Um, so this is really good if you have something where you are writing a lot of checks. So because you are setting it up in the name of your uh, 401k, you do not have to have um, an LLC to be able to do that. So that does make it a little simpler and a little bit less expensive. Protection from creditors. This is a good one. In case of bankruptcy, the general exemption found in the bankruptcy code does provide unlimited exception for retirement assets exempt from taxation. What this means is that an ERISA qualified account like a 401k or an individual K are afforded full bankruptcy exemption. Also, most states provide protection for individual K plan assets from creditors, even outside of a bankruptcy. So you get a little more protection there that you wouldn't normally have. Now, non-recourse borrowing. 
when a self-directed IRA buys real estate that is leveraged with non-recourse mortgage financing, it creates unrelated debt financed income, which is a type of UBIT or unrelated business taxable income on which taxes must be paid. So basically the debt leveraged percentage of, um, a, re of a real estate transaction can be subject to UBIT unless you're doing it inside of an individual K because an individual K plan is generally exempt from UDFI. In other words, unlike an IRA, Internal Revenue Code Section 514C, uh, I think it's nine, allows an individual K plan to use non-recourse leverage to make a real estate acquisition without tax or penalty. And that can save you a lot. So the IK plan is unique. And if you qualify, it's a tax efficient and cost effective plan that offers all the benefits of a self-directed IRA plan and more. There are many, many parts of the individual K that make it really, really appealing for self-employed business owners. And we would be more than happy to talk to you about how this might work for you. But remember, if you want to make a contribution for this year, you must establish the plan by December 31st and make your employee contribution by the end of the calendar year. You can typically make that employer profit sharing contribution until your tax filing deadline for the tax year. But you do have a limited amount of time, so you really, really want to get that going probably as soon as possible. So do we have any questions? No, nope, I don't really see any. Are you, are you in mute? <laughs> yep, my mute was on. <laughs> um, so no questions are in the comment box, but if you have any questions or what is what pertains to you personally, since after a lot of these videos, we get questions on what um, everybody's specific cases, go ahead and give us a call. It's free. We talk to you, answer your questions. Uh, we'll kind of figure out if this is the right way for you uh, to start investing. Again, we do not offer endorse or we don't offer any investments, tax, financial, legal advice, or have any investments. So this is truly for you to um, learn about individual K plans and what you need to do before the end of the year. And you can call us at 866-377-3311, or you can email us at accounts at nwira.com. Um, and we can do it via email or send you a bookings link if right now isn't the best time, but you want to get on our calendar for us to call you. Uh, we do have an option for that. So you can see our calendar and we can get it all scheduled. Um, but other than that, make sure to, to, to subscribe, like, and make sure you're asking questions um, on all the videos we put out. We're here to help and educate through all of the digital platforms. Absolutely. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be talking about the CARES Act and the $100,000 distribution uh, that you're able to take out if you qualify and uh, what you can do to get that back in. So, yes, yeah, so you, you want to check that out. That's a good, going to be a really good one on what is going on and how you can benefit for using the CARES Act um, in 2020. This is like a 2020 thing only, so you'll definitely want to watch tomorrow's live. Thank you. Absolutely. Got to watch those deadlines. Time is running out. <laughs> Have a fantastic day and we will see you tomorrow.